Hey, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I capture my performances. I'll be using the Nord drum, but this method can be used for most devices. I'm gonna start off with doing sound design and creating the track, and then I'll bring it over to the DAW so that I can modify and enhance that performance, and we'll get an end result like this. I'll also show you how I use my cameras to capture the performance and how I use video editing software to tie it all together. Okay, so I've set up some patches and I have a performance that I'm sort of drafting out. Now I'm doing this with the Nord drum, but you could do the same thing with a drum machine or a small synth jam setup. This is just what I'm using. So let me show you what I've got for the patches. I've got low end note, another low end note, snare drum and like a I don't know, like a baseball bat. Um, sort of like a ha hi-hat thing. And then another, like, pot. <laughs> so here's what I got going on. Right, that's the first part. And then I have a B part. Um, and typically for these synth jams, I'll just do two parts. Maybe like an A, B, A, B. I might do a third part and then maybe an AB out or a B out or whatever. But for this here, I'm just gonna do these two parts so that it's not just so static with just the one part. So here's part B. Okay, so you get it. I'm gonna record this performance into Ableton. You can do this with any DAW. I'm gonna capture the MIDI data, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna use my cameras to capture that particular performance, and then what I'll do is I'll smash up the audio and the video in my video editing software. Okay, so here's my current setup. Right now I have one of my cameras pointed at the device that I'm gonna be using for the performance, which is the Nord drum. And typically I'll use two cameras because sometimes if I'm playing something that's a little bit boring, it's nice to have like the two shots to go back and forth. Now I'm using a DSLR camera, but you don't need a DSLR camera if you don't have one. You can use your phone. Um, and I would just make a suggestion that if you use your phone's camera, you go into settings and set the frame rate to 24 or 23 frames per second, whatever that option is in your phone. If you don't see that option in your phone, I would suggest downloading an app called Filmic Pro. It's really cool and it gives you some controls over depth of field, which is basically where your point of focus is at, you're able to have that sort of blurry background. Um, you have control over that with the Filmic app, uh, which I don't think you'll be able to do with all of the phones. That's why I use DSLRs. But if you don't have one, you certainly don't need to get it. I'm also using my camera on a roller. You also don't need this. Let me just show you how this works. So I have an app that's connected to the roller and it allows me to set different points here. So I'm gonna take a look on my camera here. I'd say that's probably good there. And then we'll set another point. I have an option within the app to set a start point and an end point, and then I can set the number of times. So I'll just say like 100, right? Because who knows how long it's gonna take me to get the performance down. And then I'm gonna hit execute. And then this thing's just gonna move back and forth while I'm playing. So it almost sort of gives you sort of the idea that somebody's moving the camera for you. Again, you don't need this, it's just what I'm using. I've just finished recording a performance and I've got the audio and the MIDI in my DAW. Now, at this point, you could just put a master on this or get the levels louder, export it, and then match it with your video and then be done. But I like to add a little bit more to my performances, um, adding effects and things in post just to make it sound better and more interesting. So let me show you what I have here. I've got low end, which I pan to the left side. I've got the high end, which I've panned to the right side. All right, here's my MIDI data, and I have quantized this, and because I have recorded the audio in already, I am using this to add some extra samples. So I have supplemented the low end with a kick drum, and it sounds like this here. And then I also have a snare drum that's sort of supplementing the high end stuff, so all together. Yeah. 
I did all kinds of like wacky stuff. I have a send here, a pedal. It's like a stomp box emulation. I've got a little bit of distortion. I've got an auto filter on here to roll off some of the low end. And then it's going into the SAR 1R room reverb and it just sounds great. It's really, really short, uh, the reverb time. And this is what we got. Can sort of hear it ramping up in those different places here. We'll go back over to the high end. I've got a bunch of different things going on here. I have a loop that I've pulled over from Core Gadget and it just seemed to fit for the second part pretty well. So here's this. Um, also, I have some synth in here, and this is just the MS-20. We just have this here. I'll solo it. And then I put a master on here just to get it loud and to get it to sound nice. So that's it. Nothing really special going on. Just a couple of tweaks here and there. But the focus is really just on the performance, which is the Nordrum. Okay, so I have the audio from Ableton in Final Cut, and I also have the videos from both of my two cameras. I've just zoomed in and tried to match up the waveforms here. And if there's an easier way to do this, please let me know, because this can be sort of tedious. Here is the video from my Canon M50. And if you take a look right here, you can see that the audio is pretty close. If I were to move this here, because this is based on frame rates, then it's a little bit further ahead. So this looks like this is probably pretty much it. And we'll just take a look and see if these are matched up with the audio. Looks good. Now you can hear the audio from the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down. Let's put this other camera back on and we'll take a look and see if these are matching up as well. I'll turn the audio down. Cool. Very simple. Here is sort of the last step. I'm gonna sort of just do some push and pulls with these. So I'm gonna just move it just a little bit in and a little bit out. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. It'll probably make more sense, but I'm just basically gonna sort of enlarge the video and then make it smaller. You don't have to do this. It's just something I do. I'll go ahead and put a keyframe here. We'll make this 110 and then we'll go this way here and we'll make this 100 and we'll go like that. So that maybe this would be a little bit more dynamic. It's kind of cool. Keep going here. All right, uh, we'll, maybe we'll go back to 100, or 110, right? And we're just gonna do this push, pull back, back and forth. So I've done the pu push and pulls on that one here. I'm gonna just shut that video off for a moment here so that I can see this other one here. And we'll just do the exact same thing. All right, and then here is the next part. I'm just gonna bounce back and forth between these two different videos. So right now this top video is off and what I'll do is I'll sort of cut it at different places and then I'll have it come in and I'll try to do it a little bit rhythmically or whatever, just so that whenever one shot starts to get a little boring, then you go to the next one here. Right there, that's probably good. So blade and then there, now this is on, so. Right, blade here, off, blade, turn this one off here, V. All right, so I sort of did like a back and forth on this. Again, if there's an easier way to do this, please somebody tell me how to do this. All right, so now that I've captured all of that, so I'll grab this one here, grab these as well, and then I'm gonna right click these and I'm gonna do new compound clip. I'll just name this synth jam. Or whatever. And now I have this one piece here, maybe add a LUT to it, custom LUT. We'll drop this right on there. 6800 standard. That's kind of nice. Cool. And then I'll probably, maybe I'll dial it down just a little bit so that it doesn't look so whatever. And that's the process on how I do this. Um, so thanks for taking the time to uh, watch this. If you get a moment, do me a favor and take a listen to my album that I dropped a couple of months ago called Precipice. It is done 90% with the Nord drum. And um, yeah, I'd be super grateful if you took the time to listen to it. Uh, have a good week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.